Hi, I'm James Jacobson. And I'm Pamela Lawrence. Welcome to Dog Edition, the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. For this week's episode, we dug up a charming tale about an author and children's book illustrator who uses his creativity to dream up ways to help shelter dogs get adopted. If I could help someone take a second look at a dog, that is the dream right there is to have is to have that to happen and that's in the first half of the show in the second half we get serious well seriously jealous of the five million dollar border collie named lulu but seriously lulu helps us drive home the importance of considering your pets in your estate planning you know i've never thought about that (gasps) at the end it's true it's like i never thought what would happen if the Like, what would ever happen to Kangaroo? You got to think about these things. Lulu is well taken care of. (laughs) You'll find out more about that. At the end of the show, we ask, are our dogs rolling over? Rolling over us, that is. With the explosion of home-recorded podcasts. Welcome, Dog Podcast Network. During the pandemic, how do we manage to make it work among the many distractions out there? Entrepreneur and podcaster Kate Erickson helps us out. It helps you shift your perspective very quickly. And I think that that's really important in such stressful situations um, where, where you do reach those breaking points. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's take a walk. We've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey Pepper, wanna go for a walk? I live in the San Francisco Bay Area, and early on in the pandemic, San Francisco neighborhoods were making national news. Residents were rallying together to help each other out. Some created elaborate scavenger hunts in their front yards. Some pulled extension cords from their garages to power the full refrigerator set up on the sidewalks for people in need. One baked fresh bread every morning, which he lowered down in baskets tied with rope from a kitchen window to passersby. Over in the Cow Hollow neighborhood, a couple relatively new to the city and with no curtains yet in the window of their Victorian home had a similar idea to help the community weather the pandemic. My my fiance and I just had the idea of posting um, an image or drawing every day in the window. I usually post to Instagram, so we kind of just thought of it as like this like in real life Instagram. <laughs> Author and children's book illustrator, Rob Say Jr. People started to to look at them every day and take their kids to see them every day. And even like we had other people around the neighborhood do their own, which was really cool. I, I got to draw something in like a children's book style every day that was like a joke on being in the window or a joke about the pandemic not that it was like a joke but something to make people laugh throughout like at at what's happening like I had one where uh it was just like uh alligator running in its underwear and (laughs) like it's just like is everyone's in the house in their underwear (laughs) um or just like a, a window washer washing the window and just playing with that format. It was a lot of fun. So what does any of this have to do with dogs? Nothing, yet. I started following Rob on Instagram after reading about his Draw the Curtains project in the local newspaper, and I noticed he posted a lot of illustrations of the cutest dogs ever. I sent him a DM and asked him about those images. Adopt a Doodle project it just takes the profiles of adoptable pets and, and I turn them into art just so to help them find a home, but also a real problem for a lot of shelters and, and uh, foster groups is that they have such a hard time finding a home for certain dogs. Uh, un- unfortunately, they don't have a lot of resources most of the time, adoption shelters. So they might be using the same picture for you know, months or, or years. And uh, I would take that and learn a little bit about the dog and redraw that dog. And that has been a lot of fun. And I work with a bunch of adoption shelters um, across the, the country. It, it really is fun. And then at the end of the, when the dog does get adopted, I get to send the, the adopter uh, print of the, the dog, which is a lot of fun. And people love it. People love 
pictures of their dog. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love a picture of their dog? I wondered what was the inspiration behind Rob's adopt a doodle project. Did he always love dogs? I've always wanted a dog growing up, and my parents were very against uh, pets. So as soon as I could financially and, and successfully feel that I can take care of another thing, <laughs> I got a dog. And it really changed the way I, I looked at the world, but also she's been with me through so many things. Um, it's something that I think that if I didn't adopt her, it, it, my, my life would be very different than it is now. And I feel that it brought so many new experiences, but also made me appreciate different aspects of my life much more because she was involved in them. Dogs bring this just overall happiness, and they're perfect. They are perfect no matter what they do. Rob's love of dogs extended into his work, too, first as a toy designer. I went to school, actually, for toy design, believe it or not. That's like an actual, <laughs> it's like on my diploma, nothing scarier to like anyone's parents than coming home with like toy design on their diploma. <laughs> he designs children's toys for major brands, and he also designs dog toys for a company called BarkBox. Which is a subscription service for, for dogs and their humans, uh, where you get two toys, two treats, and a chew. And we, I would design the toys in the box with a team of, of great designers, and it was a lot of fun. Interestingly, designing dog toys is similar to designing toys for children. It doesn't change too much from uh, a child to to a dog, but a dog, you know, they play differently, like, and it's more based out of, like, instincts. So, like, the squeaker in a dog toy is meant to represent, this is kind of gross, but like a dead animal <laughs> or an animal dying. Um, but a lot of things are considered, like, the shape, uh, the way it fits in their mouth. Is safety is a big thing, like how it could be safe and how there's, you know, as few parts as possible. But even just the materials that we would use of the plush or is it rubber for like a dog that's like a uh, more of, of a chewer. And the textures are big because of the way they chew. They like to feel things. Textures and chewing is how they discover things. So it's, it's a lot of playing with dogs, but also just, just having fun with it and what you would do with a dog um, naturally and how you can enhance that experience. And it's not all fun and games. There was a bit of a learning curve, too. I, I did have to learn a lot about, like, the science about dogs and, and like, smells, like what smells they enjoy <laughs> versus what smells they don't enjoy. And um, I, I, I really think that the most probably knowledge that I got from designing for dogs and, and just learning is, is this, every dog is completely different. And the way you play with your dog might be different than the way I play with my dog. And how do you plan for that? And I think that's what also makes dogs so special is that each one's very individual. And his favorite toy that he got to design? A giant mutant squirrel that came to you in like a Ziploc bag. <laughs> um, and then when you opened it, it grew into this giant squirrel. And it was, it was hysterical and um, it was a lot of fun to work on. The other way Rob has brought dogs into his work life is through his debut picture book titled Love Tales. It's a, a, a funny take on just dogs meeting each other. And it's all about dog's butts, but, and how dogs say hello. So the book starts out with every dog has a tail and every tail has its own tail. So it's like this continuous book that really talks about how you meet someone, when you meet someone and how everyone is different and everyone has a different story behind them, but that they're all capable of love. And that's like the main like the adult take from it for kids. They probably just see cute dogs. Take note if you're walking your dog and listening to this right now. Rob draws his inspiration for his drawings from his own dog walks. Most of my work actually involves pictures that I take on my dog walks and I take pictures of textures, whether it's a fence or like a rusty piece of metal or an old piece of wood or... Um, a texture even on someone's garage door. And I use those pictures of those textures to illustrate 
things in my work. So I, I apply it to a shape and then I'll draw eyes on it or, uh, or I'll like, I'll build a, a whole like fashion item, like a shirt or a pants, uh, based off of those textures. And of course he draws inspiration from his two dogs. Rigby and Penny. Rigby's on the cover of Love Tales, <laughs> front and center, and Penny is on the inside cover. Um, but they, I try to sneak them into other stuff all the time. You can check out the show notes from today's show for info on Rob's work, including his adopted doodle project and his book, Love Tales. We'll be back in a moment with more Dog Edition. Welcome back to Dog Edition. Do you remember back around 2007 when New York Hotel heiress Leona Helmsley bequeathed most of her estate, some $12 million, to her Maltese named Trouble? I do. I also remember the will being contested (laughs) and the judge (laughs) knocking the dog's inheritance down to like $2 million. I think he was once once the richest dog in the world. Uh, yeah, I would think so. The title now, however, belongs to Lulu, an eight-year-old border collie who lives in Nashville, Tennessee. Lulu's owner, Bill Doris, was a successful businessman who spent a lot of time on the road away from Lulu. He often enlisted friend and neighbor Martha Burton to care for Lulu while he was away on his trips. Well, he's always left the dog for me to take care of. That's 88-year-old Martha Burton, and Lulu had become quite protective of her. Come here. Come here. She goes between me and anybody that comes along that she don't trust. Late last year, the 84-year-old Bill died. His will stated that a trust would provide for all the needs of Lulu, and the dog will remain in possession of Martha Burton. I don't really know what to think about it, tell you the truth. He just loved the dog. That's Lulu there in the background. So what's the trust estimated to be worth? Five million dollars. But before you think Martha will lavish Lulu with... Wait, you, you mean with things like a 22-karat gold-leafed Barocco pet bowl from Versace? Or uh, a Swarovski-studded pet flap. That would be cool. Pam, I'm troubled that you know those expensive pet uh, baubles. But yes, before you think that Lulu is going to get all that, the trust stipulates that Martha will be reimbursed for reasonable expenses to care for Lulu. I think the Swarovski pet flap is pretty reasonable. I do, especially if you (laughs) have $5 million. Only the finest. So this attention-grabbing story was first reported by Nick Barris, a reporter from Nashville's TV News Channel 5. But it's uncertain what's going to happen with the rest of the $5 million estate if Lulu's not going to require all of that for her reasonable expenses. So that is going to be decided by a probate judge. But while we have your attention, this is probably a good time to point out that making provisions for your dog or dogs in any estate planning, whether you have $5 million or not to leave them, is important. Uh, Okay, you want to try this? Three, two, one. Oh, (laughs) hang on. Now, launching DPN during the midst of a global pandemic has been a little interesting, a little challenging. It means that everyone on our team is working remotely. I'm recording from my home in Hawaii. Pam, you're in your home in San Francisco. What are the challenges of working from a home studio? Well, Pepper, one of my dogs, is what I like to call a Velcro dog, especially since the pandemic. I've noticed he needs to be near me at all times, preferably in my lap. He seems a little more nervous and prone to barking. This makes recording this podcast and the voiceover work I do a little challenging. Yes, I I have learned to shut the doors and make sure, because this is not really a sound studio, but we've had to make do. Um, I've learned to shut the doors on my end and make sure that Kanga and Rue know, shh, it's really quiet recording time. I'm thinking about getting one of those red recording lights to put outside my door, but I don't think they would respond. I figured we could both use a little advice from a couple that balances their very successful podcasting business, Entrepreneurs on Fire, with their new pandemic pup named Gus, who they brought home recently. Here is their story. Entrepreneurial power couple Kate Erickson and 
John Lee Dumas, left the corporate world behind in 2016 and moved their business and their life to Puerto Rico for the attractive tax benefits offered to entrepreneurs there. We've been in Puerto Rico for four and a half years now. We have our business and we run our business and we are very lucky to have a lot of freedom in our lives. So it was kind of like if we felt like picking up and going somewhere, traveling, you know, we spent three months in Europe last year. All of those things were very easy for us to do. We just had to make the decision to do them. But when COVID hit and the couple's traveling was curtailed, they made the decision to bring home a dog. It was something that John had always wanted, and Kate was a little more hesitant. Like John bringing up getting a dog, this wasn't the first time. This was maybe like the sixth or seventh time. So it wasn't like a new conversation. Um, And I was just kind of, I was warming up to the idea. I knew that it would make him really happy. I knew that it was something he wanted really bad. And I just kind of felt a shift in our life in terms of like, maybe we're ready for that like other thing. And, you know, all all things collided and, and that ended up being Gus. Now, running a business and training a new puppy is not without its challenges. It has not been easy, no, um, but it has been amazing. I feel like John and I are at a point in the business where we're absolutely stretching ourselves and challenging ourselves every day to make everything that we have better and all of that. Um, but it's a different type of challenge that, you know, didn't exist in our lives before of like how, how can we communicate better with Gus? How can we understand Gus better? How can we be better trainers so that all of this is fun for all of us? And, um, that has certainly been super challenging. It was clear to the couple that they needed to approach Gus's needs much the same way that they would approach the needs of their business as a team with distributed and defined goals and responsibilities. It was pretty obvious in the beginning that like we should come up with a schedule for who walks Gus when. We've really built in a routine that not only helps us to not wake up and be like, oh, I wonder if John's going to take him for a walk or am I going to take him for a walk? But I think it also helps Gus, too, because he knows what's going to happen every morning. You know, no matter who's taking him out, he's going out for a 30 minute walk. And what happens when the workday begins? If I'm recording or if John's recording, then the other is watching him. If John has an interview all day, uh, an interview day set up all day, like I'm going to take Gus for the day. If I have a bunch of calls lined up, John's going to take Gus for that time. So It's been really, really helpful, and it creates structure for him, too. But as anyone working from home with a dog can attest, even the best laid plans sometimes go wrong. So Gus has kind of just gotten into his barking phase. I think he's discovered that he can do it. You know, he's been in my office a couple times when I've been recording, and he barks. I think that while people wouldn't necessarily want to hear a dog barking in the background the entire episode, that there's actually some familiarity and uh, relationship that is built a little bit deeper on a level of like, okay, Kate's a normal person too. She has a dog that barks. So if, you know, Gus will bark and I'll just, you know, interrupt myself and say, sorry guys, Gus just want to say hi. You know, I kind of just make it a, a part of the episode. So that's really great advice from Kate Erickson for podcasters, or it really applies to anyone working from home. It happens. So, <laughs> sorry, guys. Pepper just wanted to say hi. <laughs> There's Pepper. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thank you for bringing Dog Edition along with you on your walk today. We'll be back with another episode next week. But chances are that you and your dog will be taking a walk between now and then, and we have something else for you to listen to. If you're interested in hearing more from some of our guests, please check out DPN's sister show, The Long Leash. And take Dog Edition along on your dog walk next week. We'll dig into the science behind what makes dogs their very own drying machines. It's really fascinating. I also sit down with Haley Berglund, who is editor of Pet Health and Behavior at Daily Paws, which is a digital publication. 
She shares some relatable questions and the fascinating answers that Daily Pause gets in their What the Fluff Q&A column. For instance, we will cover the often neglected question of why do dogs hump people and dogs and toys? It's not why you think. Dog Podcast Network is for dog lovers, by dog lovers, and that means we want to hear from you. You can check the show notes for links and information on how to reach us, including our old school recorded listener line, where you can call in to share your dog stories with us. Call 866-TALK-DOG. 866-TALK-DOG. We're looking for correspondence as we grow this podcast and this network And if you're a content producer or a podcaster or a journalist who loves dogs, check out our 101 Dog Stories contest with over $15,000 in prize money. You can learn more about that on our main website at dogpodcastnetwork.com. And join our pack. Be sure to subscribe to Dog Edition in your favorite podcast app and tell a friend about the show. I'm Pamela Lawrence, and I'll see you at the dog park. I'm James Jacobson, and I want to thank you for listening today. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, we wish you and your dog a warm aloha. Aloha.